next item on our agenda is pending legislation 016819, an ordinance creating a new subsection of the Louisville Metro Code of Ordinances to make a small amount of marijuana intended for personal consumption the city's lowest law enforcement priority. Can I have a motion and a second? Second. All right. Thank you. All right. This item is now before us, and the primary sponsor is here. Councilman Cohn is present. And if you would like to uh, provide whatever information you have to this committee. Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, let's see who else is here. I'll, I'm also glad to have you and Councilwoman Sexton Smith. And uh, President James is not listed, but also as sponsors of the ordinance. So thanks, thanks for that. Um, this is not the first um, piece of legislation that the Metro Council has uh, reviewed concerning marijuana. In 2018, 14 sponsors and 20 yes votes uh, supported a resolution that was passed by the Metro Council supporting medical cannabis in Kentucky. And so um, I refer back to that because I think that over the course of the few years that I've been in council, we've heard from a lot of members of the public uh, regarding different issues um, in connection with marijuana, some having to do with recreation and legalization, some having to do with medical marijuana. Uh, and I don't want to confuse the issue uh, because our ordinance today is only about decriminalizing small amounts for personal adult use. But I'll just note that in the resolution that we all voted for and passed in 2018, the council stated that we believe that the Controlled Substances Act should be amended to remove cannabis from scheduling we acknowledge that every state uh, has different views and sometimes uh, uh, regulates marijuana differently and asks the federal government to allow each state to do its own thing, and that we urge the Kentucky General Assembly to uh, legalize medical cannabis in the, in the, in the state of Kentucky. But um, today's piece of legislation, again, is an ordinance that is seeking to decriminalize small amounts of marijuana intended for personal consumption as the city's lowest law enforcement priority. The legislation itself is a very short uh, piece. It's just about five pages, of which the first page is the preamble that talks about some of the whereas reasons for this, and page five is just the, the footnote for our county attorney's office. It lays out some definitions, and it sort of states the policy here. But before I want to get into that, and uh, since it's so short, we can obviously make sure no one has any questions about any of the text, I just wanted to review some of the information that uh, inspired me to want, want to file this. The Courier Jur Journal, among others, has done some excellent reporting in the past year about uh, law enforcement uh, with respect to marijuana possession. Um, in an article published January 25th, the Courier wrote that black drivers in Louisville were cited for possession of marijuana in 2017 at six times the rate of white people. That while African Americans make up less than one fourth of Louisville's population, they accounted for two thirds of those charged with marijuana possession. And the courier found 21,607 cases in which marijuana possession was the most serious charge between 2010 and 2017. And that's even after the state of Kentucky's big sort of penal code reform in 2011 that I'll talk about in a minute. Since that uh, period, the Courier found that overall citations for the offense have declined since 2010, but the disparity by race has nearly doubled, which is obviously uh, troubling. The report goes on to say that most defendants were drivers that were cited after they were pulled over for minor traffic offenses or vehicle defects, and the stops were concentrated in western Louisville neighborhoods. This is something we talked about last week in committee when Chief Conrad here was uh, talking about Louisville Metro's new uh, stop policy. Um, in some more recent information, I'll note that in traffic stops by LMPD in the first, second, and fourth divisions just from January 1, 2016 to May 27, 2019, there were 1,998 uh, citations issued for possession of marijuana less than 14 grams, which is one half an ounce, which is the amount that we're talking about in our uh, legislation today. There are really th sort of two other laws that are important to understand for our colleagues who want to understand the ordinance that we're proposing. The first is a uh, Kentucky state statute that 
makes possession of marijuana punishable by a, a, ter- a maximum incarceration term of 45 days. This was 90 days, although that was reduced down to 45 days as part of the penal code reform in 2011. And then there's one other important piece of the law that I want to make sure people understand because there's been some confusion that says that state law already instructs police officers to do what what this legislation says, and that's not true. Uh, In 2011, Kentucky dealt with some penal code reform in order to deal with overcrowding issues, uh, law enforcement, resource allocation issues, and the kinds of things that we still experience and grapple with today. And in KRS 431.015, There is a law that says that a peace officer shall issue a citation instead of making an arrest for a misdemeanor committed in his or her presence. If there are reasonable grounds to believe that the person being cited will appear, in court that is, to answer the charge, and the citation shall provide that the defendant shall appear within a designated time. So what that means, because uh, adult possession of marijuana is a misdemeanor, a class B misdemeanor, that instead of police officers arresting someone on the spot, leaving the scene of the crime, going downtown and taking them to jail and booking them and arresting them, they give them a citation that tells them to show up in court uh, if they think they're not a flight risk or won't appear in court. So they can still arrest you. But uh, the point being is that you're cited and you're still sent to court and you're still made part of the criminal justice process for this infraction. And um, even if you don't end up receiving the maximum penalty 45 days in incarceration, the fact that you have to be processed through the criminal justice process, not only is that you know questionable whether or not we want to be using our scarce court resources and law enforcement resources on that, uh, the real consequences for somebody who uh, may be, for an adult who may possess a very small amount of marijuana, is that it becomes part of their record. And we've talked about in this council, in this community before, about some of the Um, job and workforce challenges that people and their families experience when they have something on their record that stops them from getting a job and when um, the high costs of uh, expungement are are still a problem. So sort of with that preamble, the the legislation in front of us today is an ordinance. It's not a a resolution. It's not a a value statement. It's intended to be uh, binding. Um, in, in, In doing the research for this, we studied, uh, with the help from the county attorney's office, the criminal uh, specialists, um, laws that exist in more than two dozen different cities and states across America, including um, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Washington, New York, Wichita, Miami, Tampa, Orlando, Atlanta, Albuquerque, San Francisco, Oakland, Seattle, Denver, Chicago, Detroit, Grand Rapids, Portland, Maine, Toledo, New Orleans, Houston, Kansas City, and other places. So a variety of cities that are bigger and smaller than Louisville, that are the same size as Louisville, that are in states where uh, the marijuana laws are the same and or different as Kentucky. And um, the proposal that we've put together today, I think, is probably the most reasonable and moderate of all of them in America. Uh, There are a couple different ways that cities have gone about trying to uh, legislate um, the lowest enforcement priority over time. Obviously, cities do not have the power to change state criminal law, so we couldn't just pass an ordinance that says that it's just not a uh, it's just not a misdemeanor anymore. There's very rare, few examples where the state gives us the power to do that. We did that with the littering ordinance, for example, earlier this year, where the state, in a deviation from the way things work, says if you want to, you can make it a civil infraction. That's not the case here, so we don't have that option. So what cities do is they sometimes enact an ordinance that prescribes a different penalty. Uh, using uh, for, for, for possession of marijuana. And we didn't want to do that because we didn't want to um, uh, uh, bump up against the penalty that's prescribed by the state. And in other cases, what they do is they legislate the police discretion in these matters by making it the lowest law enforcement priority. And so what this uh, ordinance does, if you look on page three of the, t- I'm sorry, page four of the text, And this is really the meat of it. It's short and it's simple. And we can look at the definitions in a moment. But in proposed new section 39.xx, it says that public safety officials shall make enforcement activity relating to marijuana possession offenses by adults their lowest law enforcement priority. Law law enforcement activities include but are not limited to investigation, citation, and arrest. The lowest enforcement priority policy shall not apply to the following, and this is important does not apply to the distribution or sale of marijuana. 
It does not apply to the possession of marijuana by minors, driving under the influence, or a marijuana offense that occurs in conjunction with or is related to an act or threat of violence, or public safety officials reasonably believe that the marijuana offense poses a threat of harm to the public. Also, in this, the following subsection B, nothing uh, in the section prohibits public safety officials from assisting state or federal law enforcement officers in the investigation of criminal activity involving individuals who may also be in violation of state or federal law other than adult personal use. And the ordinance calls for um, public safety officials to integrate this into their policies and their training. So it's very straightforward in terms of um, what the law is prescribing. Uh, in terms of um, who it affects, we define adult as 21 years old, not 18 years old. We wanted to err on sort of the conservative side of uh, this issue. Um, we uh, defined personal use, again, as one half ounce or less, 14 grams of marijuana, and that's, uh, I think, among the lowest that I found in any, of the, in any of the cities that we studied, which ranged from one ounces to two ounces to more. And um, <clears throat> that's basically the, the, the policy that is before us today. So um, I'd, I'd love to offer any of the other sponsors the opportunity to comment it generally or specifically. Uh, if they so choose, or otherwise, I'm happy to have a discussion and answer, answer questions. Thank you very much. Councilman Fox. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to begin my remarks by saying I support legalization of medical marijuana. And I'm very open to the discussion of even recreational marijuana. But I'm opposed to this ordinance. I think this ordinance puts a cloud of the unknown for both our police officers and our citizens. My honorable colleague used the term decriminalization twice. I looked that up through Webster, Webster and it says, the process of ceasing to treat something as illegal, regardless of how much we would all like to see medical marijuana legalized in this, in this state, it's not. So you can't decriminalize something at the city level that is a state criminal violation. I think it's far beyond time that our Commonwealth come out of the dark on this issue, casino gaming. There are several. And I would like to see change at that level. But I, I just believe this ordinance, I had a uh, constituent use the term decriminalization as well. And what's going to happen when one of our citizens thinks it's decriminalized, goes out into a park and fires up a joint and finds themselves arrested or cited or somehow otherwise introduced to the justice system, which is certainly within the purview of our police officers to do. We are the same body that gives our police officers the oath to protect and defend the Constitution, to enforce state law, and to enforce ordinance. I've represent, I'm proud to represent a bunch of very active neighborhood associations. And they have to comply with our ordinances that we pass in this chamber every day. What happens if one of our neighborhood associations don't like one of the ordinances we pass and they decide that they're gonna make it a low level priority for their neighborhood? We're certainly not gonna allow that. I think this measure further limits our police officers in a time when we need them the most. By my calculations this past weekend, two people died. There were 11 shootings, seven people injured, and that doesn't count two that occurred in the last couple of days. These things are tools, and as I said the other day, the legislature gives our officers these tools, and the framework around use of those tools is done by the judiciary. I don't believe it's this body's job to address this issue. In 2014, a resolution was sent to the legislature outlining, and it was pre predated me, but I certainly would have signed it, outlining this body's will to see medical marijuana passed at a state level. And that was 2014. Since 2014, what has happened? Nothing. What happens if this legislation passes? Nothing. So, Madam Chair, I respectfully be voting against this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Fox. Councilman Collin is back in the queue. Thank you. I just wanted to respond. And so I, 
I say decriminalization. I mean effective decriminalization. Uh, as I stated before, we can't. This, we don't have the power to change state law. But what this is really about is discretion being the better part of valor. And uh, you know, this is not the first time we've dealt with this kind of issue in the Metro Council. Recently, when we talked about the separation ordinance, the immigration ordinance, we got involved in a very direct way in terms of what this community's and this legislative body's preferences and priorities and demands were for dealing with uh, that issue. And so we're, we're entitled to do that and to say that nothing is going to happen is just, is just wrong. If the law passes, then, the, then it's the executive branch's job to enforce it. Uh, this is not about medical marijuana, even though uh, Councilman Fox mentioned that. Again, the, I, I use an example of discretion because I would argue that it's police officers' most important weapon, more important than a gun or handcuffs or their car. Every day, all day long across this community, police officers are put in situations where they have the option of enforcing the black letter of the law or to taking a look at uh, the best uses of their time and resources. And like you pointed out, I agree that they should be spending their time dealing with violent crimes and serious crimes and the kind of things that are very problematic as opposed to adults with small amount of marijuana in their, in their uh, person after they've been uh, pulled over, uh, maybe because of where they live or, or what they look like disproportionately. Uh, every time two guys get into a bar fight and a, and a, and a cop tells them to break it up and, and take them home and has their buddy get rid of them, they're exercising discretion. That happens all the time. Every time someone is, uh, you know, misbehaving in some way where they could arrest them and bring them down for disorderly conduct or some other kind of qual low quality of, of uh, life or place offense, they're exercising discretion. Uh, every time you get pulled over and you're going 10 miles over the speed limit, but maybe you have a good reason this time, uh, they're exercising discretion. And so what this ordinance does and what we're fully entitled to do is tell the police how we want them to exercise that discretion in this discrete case. Uh, there is no penalty for police officers who choose to cite someone or to arrest them as they can do under certain circumstances of state law for small, uh, for small, for possessing small amounts of marijuana. And I'm sure we could think of some scenarios where that would be the appropriate police action. Uh, but there are many, 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 and I talked about the more than 21,000 cases in the last seven years si since penal code reform, many, many, many cases where it's not necessary or appropriate. Uh, and so that's what we're trying to get at here. Um, so I, my, most important, my, my most important part of clicking was to try to correct the, the use of decriminalization. I don't want to confuse anybody, and I hope I'm clear about that, but I did want to just sort of answer those points. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Sexton-Smith. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. And I wanted to comment on the last two sets of comments. So I do believe that clarification in messaging and the words and phrases that we all use when we are drafting and then ultimately voting on ordinances is very important because the court of public opinion and people's perceptions or understanding of what we're doing is critical. And I do agree with the good gentleman to my left, Councilman Mark Fox, that the word decriminalization can be misunderstood and be very confusing. However, in reviewing the exact language word for word verbatim in the proposed ordinance, the word decriminalize was used in a whereas statement referencing other cities have decriminalized this. This particular ordinance as the legislative body members here do know, we do not have the authority to decriminalize it because that is done at the state level. So I have been using that word when I'm trying to discuss what this is about. However, going forward, although I am for 100% decriminalizing medical marijuana, which this is not about, and I am for encouraging our state legislators to decriminalize uh, small amounts of marijuana for recreational and personal use. What I want to make very clear is that not only does this ordinance create an environment where LMPD officers can exercise effective discretion in their stops and their encounters, for me, it goes a step further. It represents 
equitable discretion because the statistics of our citations and arrest and the criminal justice system uh, engagements is very clear that a black person is six times more likely than a white person in our community. We must recognize the reality of that data and receive the responsibility to reshape our ordinances in an effort to move forward with more equitable discretion. So that is the basis for my co-sponsorship of this particular ordinance, and I am in 100% of it, and it is my hope that this committee will vote this out of committee and we can take the discussion to the floor and be sensitive and mindful to all of the comments that have been made and that will continue to be made, and we embrace this as a way to move forward, creating a more equitable environment through our law enforcement system. Madam Chair, that's all I have to say right now. Thank, Thank you. you. And, I want, and I wanted to point out that uh, the mayor's administration has previously stated that this is already their current policy. And so under the current administration, under the current police department, this allegedly is the policy. All it does is codify it into a, a piece of legislation um, that will stand the test of time. Councilman Fox. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a quick rebuttal on a couple of things. And uh, my honorable colleague ran through the list of cities fairly quickly, but the ones I could catch are all in states where they've legalized the possession and use of marijuana under certain circumstances. Now, I can't say all of them were because he rolled through them pretty fast. Uh, another comment that was made uh, about folks being stopped because of where they live and what they look like, if that's the reason they're getting stopped, then we got a bigger problem than just dealing with this. And while I want to be on the record saying I disagree with that as well, and, and certainly that needs to be pursued if that is the case, I sent to the jail for some data. I'd be curious to know, and I didn't get it in time for this meeting, but I asked the corrections or the interim corrections director to send me a list of how many people that were sitting in jail for possession of marijuana less than eight ounces with no other charge, no other charge, just went to jail and sat there for possession of marijuana less than eight ounces. And I haven't gotten the answer yet, but I suspect that's zero or pretty close to it. And that's just a guess. Now, that may be on someone's arrest slip as a precursor uh, in the statement of probable cause uh, to justify a weapon that was found, to justify a warrant that was served. I'm speculating, so forgive me. I didn't get the data back. But in my experience, at least in the last 10 years of my career in law enforcement, I didn't see anybody going to jail for small amounts of weed unless it was a tool to be used to end a problem that existed elsewhere. And uh, I think taking those tools away from our police officers and limiting them in their scope and limiting them as to how they can go about doing their jobs is just not the right way to go. I think we'd be far more effective lobbying our friends at the state legislature because, again, I, I am supportive of legalization of marijuana, certainly for medicinal purposes. And like I said, I'm very, very open to the discussion on recreational as well. I think in, in areas where it's been legalized for medical purposes, it becomes a bit of a farce if you don't go ahead and do it uh, for recreational. So I, I'd be willing and supportive of that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. President James. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd just like to follow up on a few comments that have been made. One is, is that um, while it may be nice for the state legislature to do the job that they should do, obviously they're not doing that job, so it falls upon us to do the best we can do with what we have to do it with. Uh, the next thing I would say is that um, while I respect my colleagues' comments, um, whether or not people were placed in jail or whether or not they were put into the justice system through the way of citation uh, by way of large numbers, six to one, um, is whether they're in jail or not in jail, but they're in the justice system isn't correct. And it shouldn't be that way. And so this is a way to address that. I don't believe that I heard anybody say that they went to jail or were put into the justice system because of the color of their skin. I believe I heard it said that because the actions of the police department, there's a disparate impact upon people of color related to this particular topic. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Councilman Cohn, have you gotten any information um, from the administration? I, I remember having he, reading um, the mayor's publicist indicating that this is their policy policy right now. Do you have any information about that that you could provide? Well, I I, I don't have anything specific to other than reading the um, the press reports where I think. Uh, the spokeswoman said that this was the administration's policy. But I'll just say that if we've had 20,000, almost 22,000 people arrested for this between 2010 and 2017, I'd hate to see what it looked like if that wasn't the official policy. I mean, these are serious numbers, you know. Uh, and I think I thought I heard Councilman Fox talk about eight, eight ounces. That's a, lot, that's a lot of marijuana. We're talking about a uh, half an ounce. We're talking about 14 grams. That's, that's one-sixteenth the amount that he's talking about. So there's... Uh, you know, a real sharp distinction between what we're talking about adults uh, who possess this for their own personal use in, in discrete circumstances, ideally, or else you could face some, some consequences, versus someone who is, uh, might have marijuana in amount where they're trying to sell it, which we explicitly uh, exclude from any protections under this, under Section 39.XXA1. It's the very first thing we say is, is not uh, permissible. Um, you know, I think I think the statistics are 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 what they are. Uh, I'm sort of looking through my notes, and I did. I apologize for reading the cities too too fast, or if I read them too fast. Some of the cities where uh, the states where where marijuana has not been legalized in the state is Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Wichita, Atlanta, Albuquerque, Toledo, New Orleans, Houston, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, and I left out a lot of other states where there's initiatives at the state level. It's still not legal, but they're at least considering it. So there's, there's many, many more in Arizona, Florida, Ohio, New York, New Jersey. I think it all goes to show, though, that the overwhelming trend in our peer cities and in states across the country is, uh, and in the year 2019, frankly, which might be different than the year 1985 or something else, is an overwhelming trend towards not wanting to penalize people and put them through the criminal justice system for this particular infraction, if that's what you want to call it. Um, and I think you're seeing a lot of discretion from the federal government on down, rippling down through the states and through the municipalities in, in, in allowing local control and people to exercise law enforcement in their community uh, the way that they choose. You know, the federal government doesn't have to have the posture towards this that it has had for the last 10 or 15 or 20 years. So, um, you know, this is a values judgment for our community. It's how we want to treat people. It's how we want to use our police resources. Um, it's, it's, it's what we think makes sense. And, um, you know, I, I, if, if it's the will of this body, the 14 or, or more people that think that, that represent uh, all the th hundreds of thousands of people in this community, that this is uh, something that, that we wish to join many, many other cities and states across the country in supporting, then uh, I certainly hope that's the case, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Thank you. And I would say that at a, at a time when we are struggling to be able to find money, money for our police department to, to function, my personal opinion is just the priority should be on violent offenses and I've represented a lot of people on possession of marijuana cases in my daytime job, and these are people who have to take off of work. These are people who have to pay money, sometimes hundreds or thousands of dollars uh, for an attorney. Uh, and these are people who ultimately have to have a record that they are fighting to get expunged years down the line. And so when we think about equity and justice, my personal opinion is that this should have happened a long time ago. So are there any other questions or comments, colleagues? If not, this is an item that will require a roll call vote. There are t three yes votes, one no vote, three not voting. This item will go to the old bu business of the next council meeting for further discussion amongst the entire council. If there is no further meeting, Excuse me, if there's no further uh, business, this meeting is adjourned without objection. Thank you.